So we're in for a bit of a long haul because we're going to be reviewing two games at once in one review video. Can I do it? I don't have any earthly idea. So hello, my brave nice princesses and princesses Phil Fett and Games here. And today we are going to be first talking about Arcos, a first person shooter game that takes inspiration from games like Catacombs 3D, Hexen, and other first person mage games of back in the day. So first, we'll start with the graphics. For some weird reason, also, I should tell you, they don't give you all of the graphics in the main menu. For some weird, re weird reason, you can only access the extra graphics when you're in the game. So first of all, we have, of course, I set the FPS limit to 100. Resolution here, play the game window mode, obviously. Draw distance high. The Mac grass was checked off. Bloom was checked off. Camera shake was checked off. Green flash is checked off. Blood checked off. I did turn off screen shaking later because of according to some people on Steam and the Steam comments of their own reviews, it does get a little nauseating. Turned up the music because the music was really quiet at first. And that's basically it for that menu. Now the in-game menu, the pause menu settings, you have the FOV, finally, there it is. It was at 90, I drew it to 110, Jarek would be pleased. SFX volume, music volume is still up, um, sensitivity can move up or down, and the draw distance, and that's it. That's all the graphics, really. So the story of Arcos is that you play a white wizard, That's he's a white wizard, his name is Arcos. Your friend, your friend goes into a dungeon, an underground dungeon, disappears and leaves an artifact there. You're trying to find it because apparently it's extremely powerful. And so you have to go in there and you have to find this artifact. And that's basically it for the story. You get a little bit of story in each stage you go through as you go. Like, the that seems your buddy not only left, you know, one artifact, but he left all of his stats staves staves and you have to find them each staff does something different and we'll get to that so now we're moving on to the gameplay the gameplay is mostly like any typical you know fps game you would play there's a lot of strafing dodging weaving shooting your staff and with each staff you get each staff except the first staff you you have which is the red one costs mana to fire each staff has its own unique firing pattern and firing speed one staff even enables you to teleport yourself which is pretty cool and will come in handy in an extremely annoying part of this game which i'll also get to now let's move on to the bad guys you start of course with your typical guys who just run towards you with swords and you have your guys with their staves that are long range you have your spiders that hang on a ceiling you have um knights and guys to hide behind shields as they approach you. It's pretty cool. This environment in the game is extremely destructive. You can shoot the trees, the walls, anything you can shoot, almost anything you shoot will crumble. Not everything, but most things will crumble. When you kill an enemy, he'll explode into a bunch of bloody pixels. It's pretty nice. The music in this game is pretty awesome. Have a listen. They don't really- they really don't want me to leave. They really don't want me to leave. Oh, I see. I'm leaving. Let me just deal with you real quick. Yeah, that's fair. You can- you can spawn enemies on lava and not die, but I can die- I'm- yeah, fair. There are bosses in, in this game. I got, I think, past the lava levels, but it was extremely hard to do it. Where this game kind of throws a curveball at you, and that's what I wanted to talk about the most. When you get to the lava levels, this game literally makes you have to rely on the staff that teleports you. But the, unfortunately, that staff can only shoot so far, and you only can teleport so far, and it's a bunch of teleporting and clicking and praying you don't fall into the lava. Why they decide this was a good idea, I have no clue. What they should do is, what they should have done, was taking that um, power-up ability they give you at the end, when you fight the next boss in that area, that when you because when you walk into it you gain immunity to the lava and you get infinite mana to shoot at the boss but what they should have done was they should have given you that upgrade of giving you infinite health to stay alive in the lava but the enemies could still hurt you the hard part about this game is like i said the lava area and that really upsets me because i enjoyed this game i couldn't beat this game because i got stuck there it's a good little time waster 
And I think those that enjoy games like Hexen or um, Doom would enjoy this game. Though they would have to also accept the fact that when you die, you have to start over again. There's no saving. Now you don't just start over again at the beginning of the game. No, you just have to start over at the beginning of the level. So with that said, now we're going to move on to the next game. Now we're going to talk about Conway, Disappearance of Dolly of You. This game, my goodness, is awesome. Thanks to this game, I actually broke my stream record of almost streaming. I usually stream for like five hours. Thanks to this game, I streamed for almost seven. Although it took me a lot longer to beat this game because of many things. But this game is really something. Really something. First of all, we have the graphics. You have your brightness, which I turned off. V-Sync, I turned off because who needs that? Texture quality high. Analy analyzing high. And there are plenty of window. There's resolution, of course. This game also has ray tracing. I didn't mess with it, though I probably should have. So there's that. This game's graphics are not bad. They're really good, but there were some places where the audio didn't sync up with the lips or the lips wouldn't move when a character talked. And there were glitches. My favorite, of course, is the, the camera glitching out and flying everywhere all over Conway, as shown here. Uh, bag is flying everywhere, guys. Now, to explain the story, it's not complicated per se now that I've played the game. But my goodness, the twists and turns in this game just... Oh. So, you play Mr. Conway, who is a retired de detective. He is wheelchair bound. If this rings a bell, we played a game quite recently, not too long ago, called The Flower Collectors, where we played a retired policeman who was wheelchair bound due to an accident and of course you would also for those of you that are old school would remember there's a movie called rear window by alfred hitchcock which also involves someone being wheelchair bound and having to look out a window and seeing you know someone dying horribly so there is that so deli of you and and flower collectors at first when I f at first when I was playing Dolly of you I thought they would go the same way as flower collectors did at first it did for a little bit it did and then it just took its own railed way and it was a ride it was quite the ride so you play mr conway retired detective he is investigating the disappearance of of an eight-year-old girl named charlotte may and it is your job to guide him and basically ask in an interview each and every one of the people in Dial Di of You, because we, of course, believe that the girl isn't gone. And in doing so, you meet some interesting characters who aren't really forthcoming about what's going on. They often just, you know, rub their nose at you and don't really like you at all because you're poking their nose where they don't want you to poke it. But you have to do it because you promised the father of Charlotte May that you'd find his daughter, and that's what we do. We have a daughter ourselves in this game. She is a police officer. And at first, I thought that this was going to play out just like Flower Collectors, where the police officer was going to become our sidekick and go out and do the legwork for us. No, we end up doing all the legwork ourselves. We end up doing all of the solving ourselves. It's, it's pretty hands-on, this game. There are puzzles in this game. There are people to add to question. And it also, for those of you that are curious, no, it does not matter how you question these people. The result will still go the same. I've looked it up. I've watched other YouTubers play this game. It doesn't matter how you question the individuals because this game is, as it's called in description, it's a fixed game. So it doesn't really matter how what you do or say, it's going to lead to the same outcome, kind of like a telltale game. Because yes, and people... And there are people that are going to argue with me on this, but it's true. It doesn't matter what you do in a Telltale game. It's It all will lead to the, to the same outcome at the end. If you've played the Telltale games, you would know. I'm not going to spoil the ending to this game because, my gosh, it is a gut puncher. And unless you're paying attention, you won't see it happen. It's coming at all. I had my suspicions. I was thinking as I was playing the game and as I say in the stream, I had I was applying Mr. my hidden my hidden object games is one rule. There are many rules in hidden object games, but one of them is what I call the 50-50 rule. And it is basically there's a 50% chance that the first person you meet is your prime suspect. But if not, the, there's a 50% chance that anyone else is. It is a good game for those that just want to sit down and basically do investigating i love those types of games and my audience did too my audience stayed through the whole game 
people actually stuck around to watch me struggle and strain my way through the entire game, and I appreciate them for that. Whew, I feel like I did a lot there, but now I'm going to have to edit all of this, so... <laughs> That's going to be the fun part. So yeah, leave a like and subscribe, because it's always room for more, and see you in the next video. Ta!